project of Rick Thomas. Witness the fantasy. All the magic. All the illusion. All the wonder. Join Rick as he transports you to the edge, to the edge of his dreams. Rick Thomas has completed three world tours covering over 30 countries. He presents the most intriguing and innovative illusion on stage and television today. Everyone is amazed by the slick choreography incorporated into each illusion and kept in suspense until the magical climax of each fantastic effect. Rick's exotic bird act is his elegant signature piece. Combining breathtaking skill and a commanding stage presence, this award-winning performance brings audiences to their feet.
Magnificent is the word that best describes the exotic Bengal tigers in Rick's production. His passion for the wild is revealed as he works his magic with these fascinating creatures. There's a bit more. Right. As you know, I have my own show over at the Tropicana. Right. And right now, we're building a very large habitat for a few of my friends. Would you like to see them? We would love, love to see them. Would you guys give a nice hand to Rocky and Maximilian? Oh, yeah. Woo! Here we go. All right. Hi, boys. Look at the kitty. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Now this is Max over here, this is Rocky. They're brothers, they're about five months old, born at the same time. They're pure Bengal tiger. Hey, yo, Rocky. Aren't they beautiful? Now they're... <laughs> wow. Well, well, actually they're also full, so don't you guys worry, okay? <laughs> don't need to worry about your hands. But they are pure Bengal, they, they grow about a pound a day. A pound a day? A pound a day. For how long? For about two and a half years. <laughs> I'll tell you what, now. <laughs> Have you figured I, out the mathematics yet? Yeah. Well, that's big. Is there more? No, no, no. Would you like to see something big? Is there more? Do you have Just there more? A pound a day. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Now this is big. <laughs> that is big. All right, gentlemen, back up just a minute. I want to show you how big it can really get. Hey, Samson, come on. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Samson, Rick Thomas. This is incredible. <laughs> this is Zara, my baby Bengal tiger. She's about eight months old, and uh, she grows about a pound a day. <laughs> what you doing? Huh? What you doing? This is Max. He's almost two years old. Another beautiful Bengal tiger. And uh, he's getting close to uh, four, 400 pounds, four, 500. But we love him, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do.
two-dimensional picture, and you have just witnessed holographic reality. Rick utilizes a hologram to present a stunning and ingenious illusion. Two-dimensional picture. I believe you'll be amazed at what I can do with a picture and a three-dimensional object. Welcome to my room of magic. In my home, I created a room where I could actually go and practice my magic in private and create great new illusions. Behind me, I have a case housing some of my trophies from my younger years in dance. I competed in competition dance for many years when I was younger. And also, uh, a lot of the magic from my younger years when I performed at birthday parties and private functions. It was exciting, and every time I come up to this room, it helps remind me of where I started and how far I've progressed. My first illusion I ever performed is the zigzag. It's an item where you take a girl, place her inside, and cut her into three pieces. And the, well, of course, I'm not going to tell you how it's done. But it was a great trick, and it, it, again, has great memories. Right now, I'd like to now teach you how to perform magic. Let's go. Some of the greatest magic, magic that's fun, that you can perform is actually at the dinner table or out with uh, guests at a restaurant. Uh, it's impromptu. Impromptu meaning that you don't have to put it in your pocket, you don't have to hide it in a jacket, you can just grab it off the table. So these first few pieces of magic I'm going to show you are items that you can grab off the table and do magic with, and it's great. It's fun. Enjoy. Here we go. This one I'm about to show you is one I perform all the time, at every chance I get, at a restaurant or any fancy dinner. And it goes something like this. You tell the people that uh, the food at the restaurant where you're eating is fabulous, just great. But the problem is they didn't spend enough money on their silverware. The silverware is cheap. And if you don't watch it when you're eating dessert, it's going to fly right in your face. Look, see, watch. See how cheap that is? <laughs> Actually, I didn't bend the spoon at all. It just looks like I bent it. And it really is a great optical illusion. Again, it looks something like this. And then you quickly lift the spoon back up and show that it's completely restored. Now, if a waiter happens to be walking by and you do it at that point, it's even better because they get pretty mad seeing you bend their silverware. Again, waiter walks by, <laughs> just like that, and, uh, and then he can go on his merry way. It's important that you use a spoon. You need to make sure it's a spoon. If you use a fork or a knife, it's not going to work quite as well because the concave mouth of the spoon is the optical illusion. When you are bending the spoon, it's not really bending at all. You're allowing the spoon to drop past your hands towards the table, like this. Again, you push down on the spoon, and it bends, or appears to bend, as you drop it to the table. It's important to realize that as you do this, you'll be holding it with your pinky, or your small finger of your bottom hand. It will drop past your hands to the table. From the front, bent. From the side, it drops. 
It's also important to remember to keep your hands completely straight, up and down. Do not put your hands on the spoon and hold it so tight that when you bend it, it bends like this. It does not work. It doesn't even appear to be an illusion. The hands must stay straight and the spoon must bend, allowing the spoon to drop past the hands down to the table. Another thing that's important that I do with my spoon bending is to turn the spoon slightly to the left or to the right as you bend the spoon. If it is slightly bent and you bend the spoon, or at least make it appear to bend the spoon, and turn it so it is flat, you have an even greater illusion. Watch. Doesn't that look great? Looks fabulous. And then you quickly lift the spoon back up, straighten it out, and place it on the table. A simple piece of magic, but I do it over and over again at every restaurant I can, and I'll tell you, the response is the same. about to show you right now is probably worth, no, in fact, it is worth the price of this tape. I'm not lying. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Imagine going out to dinner with your friends or a client and you actually take a napkin and you challenge everyone at the table to take their napkin and roll it up into a small ball. Like this. You see? So small that whoever makes the smallest ball out of their napkin does not have to pay for their meal. Now this is the smallest anybody can squeeze any of these napkins. That's pretty small. But the great thing about this trick I'm about to show you is that your ball will be smaller than theirs every time. I'll show you. Watch. You take the napkin just like I did before. You have everybody roll their napkin up just like this. And you make sure everybody has got it just like I have it. And you point to everybody and say, now what you do is you take the top section and you squeeze it right down into the hand and you squeeze and you squeeze and you squeeze until it is so small that indeed you are the one who does not have to pay for his meal. <laughs> Isn't that great? I mean, that's, that's small. So how do I do it? Let me tell you, this is how it's done. What you do is you make sure everybody at the table has a napkin. And they must hold it just like you're holding it. And I'll get this open like this. Corner to corner. The top end must travel outside of the hand on top and make it look just like that. Everybody at the table must look just like yours. While you're talking about it and you're setting it up, you do the trick right in front of them. It's simple. Watch. Did you see what I did? I just <laughs> ripped it. And now we have a very small piece on top, a very long piece on bottom, and the trick is almost done. Almost. See how real that looks? Still looks like one piece of paper but it is two. Roll up the bottom, roll it up, and as you roll it, you're gonna pull it down out of your hands like this until it's a small ball on the bottom and make sure everybody else does exactly as you do. Set it on the table. In fact, as you do, you wanna set it close to the edge of the table. And you're going to now perform what we call a lapping. This little ball is gonna drop from the table into your lap without anybody knowing it goes there. One of the easiest ways to pull off this without someone actually seeing you drop it into the lap is to come across the table with the other arm. As you point to everybody to make sure that they're doing exactly what you're doing, you simply drop the ball into your lap and it looks like this. Try and catch me. You'll see how great it looks. How's everybody look? Good? I dropped it. They had no idea. Again, I'll hold it above the table and you can see exactly how it looks. Here, I crossed and I dropped. But you don't want to do it up here. That's <laughs> stupid looking. So what you want to do is make sure that it holds, as you hold it down here like this, you come across, drop it into your lap casually. Don't move your hand, just let it drop. And then the rest of it is just acting. Slide the rest of the 
napkin into the hand and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and you just got to free me. This magic's done with uh, eight coins. They could be 50 cent pieces, as mine are, because of my large hands. They could be quarters or nickels, dimes, it doesn't matter. It is a story about three thieves, two of which are inside a bank. The other one is sitting outside the bank looking for the cops. <laughs> now, the two thieves go into the hand. They're sitting there, and they're wondering what they're going to do with all the gold that they see sitting in front of them. They decide that they're going to separate it between the two of them, and they do it one at a time, just like this. As they go for the last bag of gold, they think they hear the third thief running into the building. Of course, they don't want to get caught by him, so they put the money back. Of course, when they look behind their shoulder, they find out it's not the thief at all. It's just a whole bunch of wind blowing at the door. So they then, again, proceed to separate their money. However, this time, the third thief does run into the bank, and they grab the last piece quickly. And he says, what do you think you're doing? And the two thieves say, nothing. We're over here. All we've done is taken the gold and put it in the closet for safekeeping. <laughs> That's magic. There isn't any hard manipulation with this magic trick. Manipulation means a lot of fancy stuff with your hands. It's just counting coins. You need to learn how to pick them up off the table and place them back on the table. It almost works itself. You start with the two thieves in your hands, and you're going to start from the right by picking up one coin, and then the left, then the right, left, and right, leaving one coin on the table. At this point, you say, you know what? We hear the third thief coming in. We don't want to be caught. So they put the money back. However, when you do, you start with the left hand, not the right. Left, right, left, right, left. Now, if you were to look inside my hands now, after placing the six coins back on the table, you'll find I have nothing in the left hand and two in the right. It's mathematical. It just works that way. But do not show your hands empty. Keep them closed. Do not let them know what is in your hands. They think that they're both separate, again, just like it was in the beginning. But no, we have two coins in the right and none in the left. Once they find out it's just the wind and it is not the third thief, they again pick up the money, but they start with the right hand. Right, left, right, left, right. The third thief runs in and they grab the last bag. But the last bag must be grabbed by the right hand, giving you six coins in the right and two in the left. The rest is just a performance. You say, no, no, no. You see, we're over here. All we did is take the money, placed it in the closet for safekeeping. Being a magician, a lot of people ask me all the time if I can do any uh, magic with money. Uh, they always say, oh yeah, you're a magician, you can make money grow on trees. Well, to some extent I can. Uh, I can make money from money, and it goes something like this. You can take any kind of bill, dollar bill, ten dollar bill, looks like this. Take the bill, roll the bill up into a very small tube, and with a little bit of magic, indeed, you can make money from money. This is a great trick because it's uh, quite easy to do. Your hands always look empty. You show the bill on all sides. And even after doing that, you're able to make a coin actually appear from the bill. Uh, again, you don't have to worry about hiding the money anywhere. Uh, it's, it's always in front of them the entire time. It's just the way you show the bill. My coin is hidden behind my fingers in front of the bill. And when you turn the bill over, you spin the bill around and catch the coin with your thumb on the back side of the bill. Again, it'll look like this. Here, you spin it down, thumbs go behind, and pinch the coin from behind. Now here's a great move. Now the coin is behind the bill, your hands are completely empty, and now you want to show that nothing is really being held by the right hand, because they know the left hand wasn't holding anything because it was sitting over here like this. So when you turn the bill around, you bend it in towards itself and give it a snap. However, what I've just done is a beautiful move in magic. Watch. The bill bends. The coin is swapped from the right thumb to the left. 
and the right hand is completely empty. From the front, it looks like this. All you then have to do is sandwich the coin inside the bill, make a magical gesture, and the coin magically appears from money. Wonderful piece of magic in which two items actually pass one through the other. It's more visual than actually verbal. And it looks like this. Again, two items, two solid pieces of wood passing one right through the other. Isn't that beautiful? Just fabulous magic. This is a wonderful trick using two matches unprepared from a matchbox. Make sure that you use the smaller matches, not the big box wooden ones because they're too heavy and too large. The smaller wooden matches are the best. Take two matches, moisten one of your index fingers, left or right hand, it doesn't matter. Place the head of the match on the index finger and the bottom of the match on the thumb and let it sit there for 10 seconds. Take the other match, put it in your other hand, identical to the first. Now, once it has set and dried, it's almost glued itself to the index finger. That's your secret right there. As the two matches come together, you're going to separate your finger and your thumb, and the match is going to actually pass by one match, and you'll reconnect once it's passed through the other match. So now you have the two matches sandwiched between your index fingers and your thumbs of each hand. It is extremely important as you do this trick to make sure that the one gimmicked match, the one sticking to your finger, is actually held horizontal to the audience watching, and that the other match is held vertical. As you pass the horizontal match through the vertical match, the audience will be less likely to see you separate your thumb from the match and replace your thumb in proper position. If it is turned this way and you separate your thumb from the match, it is easily seen. So this way hides it just a bit better than this way. Again, the gimmicked match, the match with the thumb and finger connected to it, must be held horizontal. It's also good that as you pass the matches through each other that you give it a count one, two, three, and it passes through. I'll do it quickly for you. One, two, three. As you do it quickly, it's invisible to the eye. It does pass right over it. The matches actually do click towards each other, touch, and spring right back to the thumb. But it's done so quickly it cannot be seen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Display the matches, turning the hands face up and face down, and reverse the move. One, two, three. Show the matches again. Again, reverse the move. One, two, in slow motion, three. Two solid objects passing one through another. One of the greatest close-up magic tricks you can do. Learn it, practice it. In fact, practice it in front of a mirror. When you can see yourself doing this and you can't catch yourself doing it, you're ready to do it. The trick I actually call friction. The idea is to get everybody around the, t uh, the table to uh, grab a, a few toothpicks and rub them together. And rub them together enough that there is enough friction to cause the matches to actually repel themselves from each other. Watch. Now that they've rubbed against each other, they have a tendency to bounce apart. And sometimes it gets a bit weak and you've got to rub it a bit more. <laughs> and when it's really good and hot there, Isn't that great? Two pieces of wood actually, wow, bouncing 
or reflecting one right off the other. Of course, here's the problem. In your hands, it works. In everybody else's hands, it will never work. Never. You just keep them going all night. You show them that all you have to do is rub them together, and it works. In fact, if they have a problem with theirs, you take their toothpicks, you rub them together, and then you say, I don't see the problem. It works, you see. Give them their toothpicks back, and they try it, and they try it, and they try it, and it will not work all night long. Here's the secret. The interesting thing about this piece of magic is I call it friction. And the secret behind it is friction. But it's not this friction. You could do this all day, and you're not going to cause two pieces of wood to bounce off each other. You could cause a fire, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it isn't going to work doing this. This is just a lot of play beforehand to take their mind off of actually what you're doing. You must hold the toothpick just like this. Index finger and thumb, horizontal. The middle finger is the secret to the entire process. Once the middle finger touches the piece of toothpick, it presses itself against it. The thumb and index finger press against the middle finger, causing a good pressure point. Without the audience knowing, the index finger is drug down the toothpick not as much as what I've just done to demonstrate. But it will run down the toothpick slightly, so slightly that it causes a friction along the toothpick, which makes the other toothpick bounce. You must follow me on this one exactly, or you will not get it right. Again, the toothpick must go between the index finger and thumb. The middle finger goes along the edge of the wood. And this will take a, li a little bit of practice and a little bit of re-gripping until you find out exactly how to hold it for your own comfort and drag the nail ever so slightly down the wood. Now I know you can't see me do it but I'm actually doing it and you can almost if you get close enough hear it tick 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 past the wood. If you do it just right laying the other piece of wood or toothpick on the toothpick in your hand it will bounce every time you click your nail across the wood. And it is so slight that no one, even if they're sitting and staring as close as they can to your hand, no one can see this work. No one can see it move. It's so slight. Try it. It's definitely worth learning. great piece of magic uh, with cards. Uh, the great thing about it is the uh, actual spectator. Now the spectator is a, a person who's actually uh, sitting here watching you and you're actually performing for them. They're going to actually do the magic, not you. You take the jacks out, or two jacks, it doesn't matter. Two jacks from the deck, and then the cards. And I'd like you to take the cards and count one card at a time down onto the table, as many as you want. And you stop when you want. Is that it? Yes. I can't make you put any more down. <laughs> you can make this, but I'm not going to. <laughs> You're not going Okay. <laughs> we'll put the jack face up onto the cards, place the rest of the cards on top, pick up the entire pack, and count again as many cards as you want onto the table. I'm sorry, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a time frame here. <laughs> All right, put the jack down, put the cards on top of it, and I want to thank you for doing a great job. You understand that a deck of cards has 52 cards. Hmm? Right. And you took two jacks and placed them at any point in the deck you wanted. Not me, you. <laughs> and I have to let you know that for you to accomplish this, is virtually impossible. Among 52 cards for them to find their mate, you did a fabulous job. Great piece of magic. All right. This trick really is amazing. I mean, for a person to actually find two cards out of an entire deck and have a freedom of choice the way you, you, you did is uh, virtually impossible. Uh, well, actually, it's not too impossible. It's just a trick. What you do is you start out with a deck of cards, and you find two jacks. Uh, a red one and a black one, and put them on the top and the bottom. It doesn't really matter which way, just 
black and red. Okay. Uh, for this uh, explanation, we'll have the black one on the bottom and the red one on the top. You then hold the deck towards yourself, you being the magician. You run through the cards and you find the two other jacks, a red jack and a black jack. Now, if a black jack is on the bottom of the deck, make sure that the black jack sits face up first on the table. You'll find out why in just a minute. Yeah. That's it. That's the entire setup. They don't know it's set up here, but you need to make sure that when they get the deck that they don't cut it in half or really shuffle it fast. They need to keep it in order. So you give them the deck, and they start counting off one card at a time. Go ahead. One, two, go ahead. Now stop here for just a moment. You've taken that first jack and placed it face down on the table because that was the first card that went, and that's a red one. Continue counting in as many cards as you'd like. All right? You'll take the black jack, put it face up on the packet, and drop the entire pack on top of it. Now, what does it do? Look at the card on the bottom of your... See that? Isn't that great? Take that jack, now the entire packet, and put it on top of it. You've just met the jacks. Now, lift up the entire deck and start counting again, one card at a time. <laughs> one card at a time. All right? And you stop when you want to, and you put the jack down, and you put this on top, right? But look underneath. What, what card's there? The red. So put it red, right down like that. Then you take the cards back, you give them a little bit of a story of that, about how impossible this is. Spread through the cards, and it's important that when you separate the cards, that the card right above the jack is the one that you push out. Turn over the face down cards. So what do you think? <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's easy. It's easy. All right. Have a good one with that one. It was great. Thanks for helping out. Are you ready for some real magic? Yes. No, no, I'm, I'm, t I'm real magic. Real magic, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, be prepared. Okay. Would you please cut the deck in half? All right. I'm going to mark that cut. Now, I know it doesn't look like real magic so far, but it's going to really happen. Now, you had a freedom of choice to cut to any card you wanted to cut to. Is that correct? Yes. All right, we're going to take that card and leave it here as reference. In this case, it was a, a six. The rest of the cards we're going to take and put inside the case. Now, you ready for the magic? <laughs> yes. Okay, I've warned you. Oh, my gosh. And indeed. Wow. We found its mate, just like magic. So uh, you want to learn real magic. You want to learn how to make a card rise out of the deck. I mean, the real stuff. All right. From me to you, well, if you haven't already realized, this is a really good trick. It is a normal deck of cards. However, to start, you must get the case it came in and do a little bit of work on the back side of the case. Now, don't tell anyone. We have happened to have cut out an entire square out of the back of the box. You see? Hello. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we cut the entire back out. And I'm going to show you the uh, move of making a card rise out of the deck first. Once the card has been chosen, the deck goes face up into the pack, into the pack, into the case. You grab it with your fingers, leaving your index finger free, putting it at the bottom of the card. And with a little bit of magic, the card rises out of the pack. The card rises. out of the pack. You take it out, show them that indeed this is real magic and there's no secret with the card, and you've just created a miracle. Now, how to get them to choose the proper card? 
The case sits on the side of the table closed, so they can't see the opening in the case. Whatever card you want to make rise out of the deck, make sure its partner is next to it on top of the deck. In this case, we use the, the two sixes. You can shuffle the cards as many times as you want, as long as the last two cards that drop from the top of the deck stay on top. So if, if you do a normal riffle shuffle, the cards drop, and you let the last few cards drop on top, letting the two sixes stay on top. You could shuffle like that all night long. All right, the two sixes stay on top. Now we're going to do what we call a cross-cut force. It's quite simple. You ask them to cut the cards in half. You then finish the cut by taking the bottom half and turning it crossways on top of the top half just cut. You then misdirect their attention from the deck that they just cut by telling them that they had a freedom of choice. They could have cut to any card they wanted. You then remove the bottom half, which was the bottom half, and simply remove what really was and always has been the top card, a six. You then take the top half, place it back on the bottom half, bringing the other six back to the top, taking the cards, putting them into the case, a little bit of magic, and there you have the rising card. No wonder that Rick Thomas continues to perform all over the world. He is one of the greatest stars in magic today. You've seen for yourself his unbelievable magic. You've witnessed the fantasy. Fantasy. The illusionary magic of Rick Thomas. The illusionary magic of Rick Thomas. Thank you again for purchasing this video. Here are a few more souvenirs you may want to purchase from the show.